Hello everyone, welcome back. Chapter 10, we're going to talk about the tools that you may need if you are thinking of starting your lip blush career. Um, so first of all, you would need numb, like pre-numb. Um, this is, okay, so there is like a huge misconception out there that numbing isn't good. And I know that there are artists that do lip blush without any numbing. And honestly, you know, throughout my career, um, for all of my PMU procedures, I always use uh, numbing. Lips wouldn't be an exception. And um, honestly, my clients are fine. Um, the lips are always the most sensitive part. So regardless, like even if you numb or don't numb or whatever, they're, they're still going to feel pain. In my salon here, um, because we're a salon, so and then we have, you know, like Botox injection procedures in here. So we are able to use the prescribed numbing cream. Um, which is better than like, you know, normal um, topical numbing cream, but normal topical numbing cream is also good. It's just going to take a little bit longer to kick in versus the prescription numbing cream. So with any of the numbing cream, um, you definitely want to make sure that the numbing cream does not contain epinephrine because epinephrine restricts the blood flow. Therefore, the color will have a hard time to show through while you're working. So with this being said, uh, there are clients that might, you know, kind of get the dental block now while the dental block helps them like they really don't feel anything but it does not help us because it takes so long for the color to show and sometimes the lips just feel hard like it hardened the lips and the colors just don't really show okay so if you are new and if your clients had dental block uh be prepared that like you're gonna feel like your first pass was like nothing <laughs> because like nothing is actually gonna show especially if you're new your pressure might not be all there yet so you know um and with dental block it's like an extra block of like colors not showing so just um fyi pre-numbed i really like this j kane it's a korean numbing brand and um it sold in like a, a bigger pot and it lasts for a long time we also carry this in our salon I love, love this. We use this for our tiny tattoo procedure, actually. We do numb the clients for tiny tattoo. So yeah, so we use this as well for, and then every now and then for the lips if we run out of the prescription numbing cream. Uh, the numb pot is the second choice. However, it's kind of small and can be expensive and you'll go through it pretty quick. So yeah. Um, Zensa, I liked Zensa. Uh, Zensa works kind of the same as the J-Cane, uh, but I feel like, um, again, it can be, you know, like pricey for the amounts that it has in the tube, but you are welcome to try it out. Whenever you pre-numb, make sure you leave it on for, you know, like 20 to 30 minutes for the J-Cane. Um, if it's prescribed numbing cream, then usually it's like 15 to 20 minutes. And pre-num is always in a form of gel or soft cream type. Secondary numbing. Secondary numbing is basically numbing that is intended for broken skin. And this numbing should be used once during the procedure, okay? So the lips have very short pain tolerance, even with numbing. Therefore, the more effective you are at your application, the better and faster the lips will take color. So this is the reason why my lip blush goes by so 
fast, like really effective and efficient, right? Because the lips, again, has very short pain tolerance. And if you're like super light-handed, like barely touching them, then it's going to take you forever. It will probably take you like three, four passes or like three, four hours, you know? So I'd rather like go in, not like not going deep at all, okay? But like go in like really effectively, meaning like do, do um like cover 90 to 100% um, overlapping, you know, and be done with it after two passes, okay? And basically for secondary numbing, I only use once during the procedure. So I'll go in with the first pass. Okay, start over. I pre-numb the clients and then when they come in, I do the outline and the first pass right away. And after the first pass, I put on this numbing gel and then I go on the second pass, more kind of like, a um, you know, like an adding finishing touch to it and be done. That's it. OK, because the more numbing you use, the wider, the whiter the lips will get because there is some epinephrine in the secondary numbing. Or even if there isn't any epinephrine in the secondary numbing, it's still gonna take, you know, like the lips a long time to like show the color if you numb too much. And surprisingly, the more you numb, the more pain they feel, okay? So when I first started, I did not know. And oh, it was rough. Because I'd be numbing them and then I would be like going on the first pass. I'm like, where are the colors? My clients are feeling pain. Okay, I'll, I'll shuffle like another layer of numbing gel on for them. And then I'll keep going. And then like the more I do it and like the clients, it's just like, oh, it hurts or whatnot. And I keep like putting it on. So the more I kept doing it, the more I'm like, why isn't the color showing? you know? So um, that was when I first started um, lip blush and really didn't have a, an amazing training. So I didn't know that numbing really could affect it, right? So um, yeah, over time, I, you know, perfecting my craft, and that's how I sort of like find out um, about the whole numbing thing. So um, with the juicy lip technique, you'll be able to work the lip effective and efficient. Um, you can use Tag 45 or the Sustain. I like to use the Sustain. So this is what I use. And I only apply a thin layer after the first pass. All right, some tools. Um, you're going to need the baby powder. Obviously, it doesn't have to be a giant bottle because um, you're not going to use the whole bottle, trust me. <laughs> Uh, it's going to last you forever. So get like the smallest bottle that you can find. You're going to need some powder puff or actually um, I, you know what I use? I use those disposable cotton rounds that people use to remove makeup. Yeah. So you're going to need that later on when you watch um, the client demo videos, you will know why. <laughs> Mapping strings, honestly, uh, you don't have to waste your money in buying different mapping strings. I just use thread. And trust me, thread is like your best friend. It's it's so affordable and um it doesn't get messy and um you can it doesn't break, it, it doesn't smear, it's just great. So just have threads um white face paint you're gonna need this um, but actually if you are taking my hands-on class um, this comes with your kit already same with the mapping string red gel pen um you might need this for your shaping but you might not so see how comfortable you feel um it comes in with your kit for the hands-on training Angle brush, you would need this to shape the lips. And this also come with your uh, kit, hands-on kit. 
hustle butter, um, or you can use A and D ointment. It comes with your kit, with the A and D ointment. I use the A and D ointment. I used to use hustle butter, but you know, um, later I find that I actually like the A and D ointment better. It it's not super shiny, um, and it like helps to to heal the skin at the same time too. So I don't really use a hustle butter as much anymore. But if you want to experience out different types of clay, this is a nice one. Machine, um, the powder. Uh, I'm sorry, the power supply and the PMU machine. So the PMU machine comes with your kit. If you're taking the hands-on or the um, uh, the online training, it comes with your kit. Now this one though, you might need to purchase, um, depending on how you like to use the machine. Um, this one is battery powered and you can use this alone by itself for your lip blush procedure. Um, well, having a power supply is going to give you more control. And here's the reason why. The power supply allows you to go um, at a lower speed, okay? And lower speed works great for people who have sensitive lips, thin lips, you know, you can't really go like high voltage. The With the battery powder, battery powered um, PMU machine, the lowest that it can go is just like a 4.0 voltage, okay? So, you know, there, you can think about it, the, um, with the power supply, you can go as low as 1.5. And with powder brows or like with brow procedures, I use the power supply. And because I already use it for um, the brows. So when I do lips, I just use this. And it's nice because my max that I go using this for lips is just a 3.0 voltage. And um, for really thin, sensitive, easy to bruise, swell lips, I use like a 2.7, 2.8 voltage. You're gonna need the 1RL needle um, with the newest juicy lips technique that I have. I actually use the 0 0.40 um, needle, which also comes in your kit. All right, so that's it for the tools. Um, please look into the workbook. Um, the very like first few pages, it will have the list of other supplies that you might need to purchase, such as like um, a PMU bed, like a PMU light, chair um some you know like barbicide wipes and so on so those are you know like some of the tattoo or pmu tool tools that you really need in order to um you know keep everything nice and clean all right i will see you in the next